Hi everybody and welcome. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about AI music portfolio projects. The video is gonna be divided into two main parts. The first one is gonna be a kind of introduction. I'm gonna uh, say a few words about what I believe is fundamental for a music AI music uh, portfolio project and also explain why these projects are very, very important for you. And in the second part, I'm gonna give you seven examples of AI music projects that you can actually implement by yourself. Now, a little bit of context here. So you may be at a university or you've rec recently graduated, but you still don't have any experience in the AI music business. And you want to become an AI music engineer or an AI music a researcher, for example. So how do you do that? Well, you don't have any experience. So how can you showcase your abilities, your skills to recruiters and let them know that you are like the uh, right person for that job. Well, you have to prepare some portfolio projects and this is like very, very important. Now, lately I've been involved in the recruitment of junior AI music developers and AI music engineers. And uh, I think like what I want to know and about like a candidate is, his or her uh, abilities regarding like artificial intelligence. So both like the implementation side, knowledge of libraries like TensorFlow, PyTorch, all of this kind of stuff uh, and the theoretical part. But at the same time, I'm looking at the knowledge and skills that this person has in audio digital signal processing. And if you're dealing with a music specific job uh, position, then music processing or music information retrieval. The third point that I really look at is the capacity of this person to write high quality code or production level code and being able like, to deploy a solution into production. So just like to keep in mind, like these are like my three uh, top points for a candidate. So knowledge of artificial intelligence, its application in the music uh, environment or audio environment and uh, the ability to be like a very good programmer in the end. Now, these are like the main features that I think are super important to showcase in uh, your portfolio projects. But what's like the ideal portfolio project? Of course, like you want to showcase all of these like uh, skills through like what you build. And at the same time, like a, an interesting question is like, how big should a, the scope of a portfolio project be? Well, my question to that is that, of course, like you have to, to make a trade off there, right? So you can't build something like that. You can't build like a whole product. But on the other hand, you don't want to build like something like that's a toy application either, right? So. I think like you should find a right balance. So something that isn't too large in terms of its scope, but at the same time, something that isn't like too small. And I think like a good way of like uh, understanding or gauging whether like you are on the right track is to kind of dedicate a couple of months up to three months of development time to a portfolio project. So this is enough time for you like to understand uh, and dive deeper into whatever topic you are uh, tackling, but at the same time, isn't too much time, isn't too uh, overwhelming. Now, this is like a, an important aspect. So that of like the scope, the finding the right scope for your project. Now, another aspect that I think like is very important for um, portfolio projects is their presentation. So these I think like at the end of the day are the most important things like that you can present to a recruiter, which basically leads me like to this uh, reflection, which is you should have like a repository on GitHub, of course, like with your project, but mainly you should have like a great readme uh, file for the project where you present the project and explain like what you've done and what like that application like does and how it does it. And that is important for a couple of reasons. First, because like it gives me a recruiter, um, like at a glance, like what you've done and how you've done it. But at the same time, this also demonstrates the fact that you can communicate what you've done in a very efficient way. And AI engineers 
or AI music engineers, like in our case, should be very, very good at communication. So yeah, think about like writing a very good readme uh, file for your GitHub repositories for your um, portfolio projects. How do you develop like these projects? I think what's really important to have in all of your uh, projects, no matter how large or how small they are, is having unit tests or even better, following the test-driven development practices. Now, if you're not familiar with TDD or test-driven development, I highly suggest you to go check that out because like, it's a fantastic practice, software engineering practice to uh, improve the quality of your code. But in a nutshell, the basic idea is that you write a unit test that does like a very simple thing, and then you write the code that passes that test and you iterate. So you're gonna write another unit test before continue working. So in this way, you're gonna create a suite of a unit tests. Now, why is this important in a uh, project, right? In a simple portfolio project? Well, because it sends a very clear signal to the recruiter to someone like me. Hey, I know how to write high quality code and I know how to test it, right? And you really can't imagine how few people actually do have like unit tests like in their portfolio projects. And this is gonna be like an absolute advantage, competitive advantage that you'll have uh, among, among like other people. So yeah, keep this in mind test-driven development and unit tests in your portfolio uh, projects. Finally, I want to briefly touch upon the benefits that you get by working on portfolio projects. Well, I think like here the benefits are twofold. The first part is that you're, you're basically shouting to the world that you are a good AI music uh, engineer and you're just like demonstrating that by example right? Just by implementing stuff and something like that works. The second part probably is even more important than that. And it's basically the fact that you're going to learn a lot by working on this project. So you're going to get a lot of experience, a real world uh, experience, and you're going to just like dive into, I don't know, research papers regarding whatever topic you may be tackling, as well as like understanding how like production frameworks and tools actually uh, work. So yeah, this was a little bit of a, an introduction regarding um, portfolio projects. Now let's see seven examples of portfolio projects that you can work on. So we're going to start from the first one, which is quite simple. It's a music genre classifier. Now, uh, if you follow the Sound of AI channel, so you probably know that I've covered this like uh, in a couple of like occasions already. So if you want to uh, check out like my implementation of a music genre classifier, you can just like check it out up here. But why is this like interesting? Well, this is an interesting application because it enables you to experiment with deep learning, right? And with certain types of like deep learning architectures that are very used in AI music, namely convolutional neural networks, LSTMs, or the combination uh, of these two, like CRNNs, for example, right? So, and these are very, very important skills that, that you'll need in any AI music position. Now, if you want to go like the extra uh, uh, leg, so what you could do is take like this application and uh, create a, a REST uh, API around it. So you have your model, that's going to be able to uh, identify the genre, the musical genre of a piece of music. And uh, you can have like a wrapper around it, basically like an API, a uh, REST API. And you can build that with Flask, with Django, Pyramid, whatever uh, Python web framework you prefer. Now, why is this important? Well, this is important because uh, mm, yeah, I would say like very, very often as AI music engineers, we are asked to build REST APIs where in the backend you may have like a deep learning model, but then you have to expose this like to the external world and you can do it and you can do this by uh, building a REST API. And in the process, you will also learn about REST APIs and how to uh, implement them. 
So yeah, this is like a very interesting uh, experiment or project, if you will, uh, to play around with. And so you have both the deep learning side as well as like the more production side with Flask and the actual implementation of a REST API. Project number two is very exciting and it's a, an intelligent loop recombination uh, system. So what's this about? Well, here the idea is to kind of simulate what uh, EDM producers usually do. I don't know like, how familiar you are like with electronic dance music and with music producers, but some of them work with loops. So loops are this, yeah, tiny music passages or music phrases, if you will. And you can have a loop that's a drum bit, right? Or you can have like a guitar loop or uh, a voice loop. And what some of these uh, pr music producers do is combining uh, together a bunch of different loops for different instruments and then creating, so composing the music by combining loops. Now, this project is basically doing like the same thing, but automating all of the all of the process, right? So you start with uh, certain loops and then you combine them in order to create a, a song out of like these loops. Now, what are you gonna like, learn by doing this? Well, first of all, I have to say that here you have a couple of options or a couple of uh, possible implementations. So one is basically using machine learning techniques but in order to use machine learning or deep learning, you should have a data set not only with loops, but also with the actual combination of loops, right? And you, you know that, uh, you know the combinations, and then you can learn how to recombine intelligently um, like all of these like different loops. But most of the time you won't have like that data. You would actually have like just a loop data set, a bunch of audio files, right? And if you are lucky enough, they're going to be uh, tagged. And so you can use like, that information. But this like, uh, leads me like, to the second approach that you can use for creating this intelligent recombination machine, which is a rule-based uh, engine, right? So basically, you are going to develop a bunch of rules based off the features that you can extract from these loops. And this brings me like to another interesting point, which is you want to extract these features. And here we're talking about all types of music and audio signal processing features, like, I don't know, like pitch, uh, counter, or key, or BPM, or I don't know, like density or danceability of a loop. So for Extracting all of this information, you're going to need to work with audio digital signal processing. Some of these algorithms for extracting like BPM, for example, uh, you can build from scratch. Others, you can use uh, pre-made or third-party libraries. And this is very interesting because uh, by doing this ex exercise of extracting features, you're going to be uh, dealing with a lot of audio signal processing and music processing uh, libraries like Libreza, Essentia, and a bunch more, right? And the good thing of this is that, first of all, you're going to get a lot of experience with all of these tools and how to combine them together. And at the same time, you're going to dive deeper into audio digital signal processing. And a final word on the a rule based like engine aspect. So I think like that is also like something like very, very interesting like, to, to have how to build like a rule uh, based uh, engine. So that is like something like very useful. And still today where all the buzz is with deep learning, machine learning, having the ability to build a very good rule based uh, system is, is great. And if you start working like on this project, so recombining intelligently loop with a rule-based system, then you'll also have to understand the domain. And this is also like something very important because in all AI music, you really have to have a very good understanding of the domain of the topic itself. And by working on a rule-based engine, this I mean, you can't fake it. You have to understand what you're doing. So there's no machine that's going to learn all of those rules like by themselves automatically. So you have to think, extract features, do some uh, like feature engineering, understanding how to use these features to build like intelligent rules. Let's move on to the third portfolio project. 
this is probably the most important one and the most valuable the one that if you do implement are gonna give you like the most benefits and this is building a simplified version of an audio machine learning or deep learning pipeline so what's this about well the basic idea here is that you want to build a framework a pipeline that will enable you to automate the whole machine learning or deep learning training process from data and gathering all the way to deployment potentially so what are like the the main building blocks here so you should think of a pipeline as a number of like components that like feed into each other so here probably what you want to do is like start with like some kind of like pre-processing so you have your data all your data stored somewhere and then you are gonna have like this first uh, component uh, that's basically gonna pre-process the data and by pre-processing I mean being able like to extract features like spectrograms, melt spectrograms, MFCCs and storing uh, the relative features like somewhere else. So this would be like the, the first uh, bit uh, of like this audio pipeline. The next one will be that of like training so now that we have the uh, features we and we've extracted them, we can actually train our models. And so here you're going to have like the training uh, component where you can also like select among different models. And this is going to be like a very interesting challenge as well. So uh, building probably using uh, object uh, oriented programming, a uh, framework that will enable you like to to create any type of or a few types of um, deep learning architectures by calling different objects and stuff like that now this is like very very instructive and super useful uh yeah because it's gonna enable you like to to get accustomed with a lot of like different types of uh deep learning architectures and at the same time thinking as an engineer not as a data scientist of as a person i've defined in a previous video a scripter someone who writes like this 1000 line scripts uh without like any quality in the code uh, and repre reproducibility of the code whatsoever okay so here you have like your second component which is like this training plus like model construction then you have like the third component uh, component which is going to be evaluation so in this component you're going to take care of evaluating uh the performance of your uh models and finally like the fourth uh component will be that of like uh containerizing uh, your models so perhaps you can have a pipeline where at the end you you can like build a docker uh, implementation or a containerization of your models so that they will be ready to be used on any platforms now what's the great thing about like building like this simple audio ml uh, pipeline well it is that i mean it's going to give you an incredible experience in all things regarding uh for example uh, the different deep learning um libraries so you can build this in pytorch you can build it in um tensorflow and at the same time it's going to give you like a great understanding of audio features because you have to take care of pre-processing and also you're basically like creating a high level like engineering like pipeline which is like actually quite difficult to do and i have to say that if I'm a recruiter and I see a junior dev who's implemented a, an audio ML pipeline, well, I think I'm sold. Yeah, because that, I mean, is very, very good like to showcase because it showcases like so many skills that you have. So yeah, try to like, build a simple audio DL deep learning pipeline. Let's move on to the fourth portfolio project, which is an application for music summarization. Now, what's music summarization? Well, it's basically uh, the idea of like creating a preview for a piece of music. So you have a song uh, and you decide like to, yeah, just like pick the most important uh, part of the song and uh, summarize the whole songs in 10 seconds or 15 seconds. So this is a very, very interesting um, application and also it's a very challenging one because uh, first of all you have to build like a a system that's going to be able to 
understands like all the different structures that you have in the music itself. So it's going to be able to divide a chorus from a verse, from a bridge, and then you are going to need to kind of like combine the most important parts, understanding what's the chorus, what's the bridge, what's going to be repeated multiple times. And so you don't want to repeat it yourself. Now, for building a music uh, summarization application, you're probably going to uh, need to use some audio digital signal processing. So which like ideas like self similarity, like matrices, like for example, from chromograms and stuff like that. So this will really improve your understanding of a, a bunch of like topics in music and music processing or music information retrieval. The fifth portfolio project is quite amazing and it moves into the field of generative music. And for this project, what you want to do is building a polyphonic piano accompaniment uh, system. Well, what's that? Well, uh, basically, like the idea here is that you have like a melody and uh, like, for example, you can have like a voice melody, right? And so you can feed into like this system, the melody and the system is going to build the accompaniment on on a keyboard or a piano. Uh, for that specific melody. Now, you could have like a couple of like approaches like to this. Well, first of all, the way like the, the type of data that you accept and that you create like with this system, you can go like audio. So you, you just like pass in an audio melody and you get out like an audio melody plus accompaniment, piano accompaniment. But I would discourage you like to work on this because it's very, very complicated, but rather I would highly suggest you to work on the symbolic music um, kind of like uh, implementation of this. So in this case, what you're going to have is not audio as input and audio melody, but rather you're going to have some kind of music re symbolic representation of the melody itself. So it could be basically like a MIDI file, a simple MIDI melody that you pass into the system and then you get out a MIDI a file once again, but this time melody plus the piano accompaniment. Now, there are a gazillion ways you can actually implement this uh, application, uh, but I would suggest you to play around with GANs or generative adversarial networks like to, uh, to build this because you're going to get like a lot of <laughs> good uh, like hands on experience on GANs. And these are like very <laughs> delicate uh, generative deep learning models like to train. And yeah, and it's going to be like a lot of fun and at the same time, like a very instructive uh, experience. Next up, we have the implementation of a music recommender system. Now, music recommender systems are everywhere so on Spotify, Deezer. Yeah, whatever like streaming platform has a music recommender system. Now, there are different types of music recommendation techniques that you can use, but mainly so far, like the two dominant ones are collaborative filtering, which actually leverages the um, data, behavioral data. So like how uh, users like interact with a platform, like the watch, like users listen to what they like, what they don't like. And then you have a secondary uh, or second approach, which is so-called content-based filtering. So here you just extract features from uh, the music itself and you leverage those features to make recommendations. Now, of course, uh, I don't want to give you like a full explanation of what collaborative filtering or uh, content based filtering are at this point, but I just want to give you like pointers and you can then like dig uh, like at, at a later point if you're interested in this type of uh, project. Now, what I would suggest you to do is like combine like this uh, two techniques. So you build basically like a recommender engine. Uh, that is like an ensemble engine, right? So you have two subsystems, two sub engines, if you will. So one implementing collaborative filtering, the other one implementing content based filtering. And then you can combine them together in order to create like more complex and more complete, if you will, uh, recommendations. Now, uh, that's not all for this type of uh, application because I would highly suggest you to tap into also a very interesting type of recommender that literally is getting a lot of like buzz, I would say, in the recommender engine um, field. And that's like personality-based recommendation. 
And here the idea is that you get an idea of the personality of the user, and then you leverage that in order to provide uh, rec music recommendations that are kind of like in line with that uh, user. So for example, if you have a user who's a very open person, so you're gonna probably uh, provide a lot of like different types of genres like to this person because usually like people who are like very open, who are curious, are also interested in uh, learning about different types of musical genres. So once you have this third type of recommender engine based on personality, then you can kind of combine it in this on high level ensemble model. And so you're gonna have your uh, tiny collaborative filtering engine, your tiny uh, content-based filtering engine and your personality-based uh, recommender. You, and you're gonna combine them all together. Final suggestion that I have is uh, building a noise canceling uh, system. So this is gonna be like a very interesting one because basically what you can do is get as input an audio file with uh, some kind of like noise. You pass it into like this architecture, like noise canceling architecture, and on the output, you're gonna get the, the very same audio file, but we, like without noise. Now, how can you implement like this type of noise, cance noise canceling system? Well, there are a bunch of different techniques. Some of these are based off uh, audio digital signal processing, like for example, the wavelets, but I would highly suggest you to work on uh, with a type of technique that's in the deep learning field. So using variational auto encoders. Now, variational auto encoders are everywhere these days. So it's very important that you are familiar with those. And so you can also use them for uh, basically like cleaning um, noisy signals and just like resynthesizing like the uh, the signals uh, removing noise. Now, if you want to learn more about variational autoencoders, I have a whole uh, series on them up here, and I've used them for generating uh, sounds. But the basic ideas, like for generating sound and for cancelling like noise are more or less the same. Here you have seven applications that are gonna be very good to have on your AI music uh, portfolio. How many of these should I implement? Well, I would suggest you to implement probably three or four of them, which is gonna probably take you uh, anywhere from uh, six months like to 10 months, something like that. This is gonna be a great experience. You're gonna learn a ton of things and your CV is gonna shine and be outstanding. And I can assure you that not many people have good AI music applications on their portfolios. So that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful. If that's the case and you're not a subscriber of the Sound of AI channel, please do subscribe and leave a like. That's all for today. I'll see you next time. Cheers for now.